Welcome again everybody and thank you for joining our global webinar day on dynamic reporting with InfoSim StableNet. My name is Dietmar Kneidel, Director of Sales Europe with InfoSim and I will be your moderator for today's event. Joining us from our main office in Würzburg, Germany are my colleagues Hendrik Degener, Developer and Consultant with InfoSim. Good afternoon Hendrik. Oh, sorry. I've muted you. Sorry. Good afternoon, Hendrik. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, also joining us uh, from our office here in Würzburg, Germany, is uh, Harald Hoon. He's one of our senior developers and also a consultant with InfoSim. Good afternoon, Harald. Uh, maybe Hello, you're... Together. Ah, okay. Not... So we have a bit of a muting problem today. Um, well, so those two gentlemen will guide you through our presentation and live demo today. But before I hand over to Hendrik, just a couple of household items. I wanted today's audience to know that all of you are automatically muted in order to keep down the background noise. So for us to answer your questions, you will have to type them in the questions window at the bottom of the GoToWebinar application. We will be answering all questions either directly in the chat during uh, the presentation or the webinar or at the end of our session in our uh, Q&A section. Also, please take note that this event is being recorded and all registrants will be notified via email tomorrow on how to access that recording. Well, that's it from my end so far, so I'd like to go ahead and turn things over to our presenter, Hendrik Degener. Hendrik, are you ready? I am ready. And okay. So let's get started with the dynamic reporting with InfoSim StableNet. And what I will start with a little example. So what you want to do uh, from time to time is to generate a report for one device. Um, you might want to see the availability, the load of the CPU cores, the interface traffic, and um, maybe not only for one interface, but for all interfaces or all CPU cores, of course, um, and the storage usage. And um, after you've configured all those um, charts that you want to have in your report, you might want to um, have the same report for another device. So, what do you have to do with the classic reporting approach? First, you have to clone your report. Then, you modify the uh, source device for your availability chart. You then adapt uh, the CPU charts and um, if you have multiple CPUs, maybe you have to add or remove some of those charts just um, because you do not have uh, any possibility to um, get the information how many um, cores a, a device has reflected in your report. Um, you have to continue with adapt adapting the interface charts and the storage charts where you might uh, add or remove um, some other charts. So that sounds like uh, much effort and uh, what's even worse is that it's um, error prone because um, you might miss some items um, and if the, uh, yeah, the configuration, the hardware of your device changes, maybe a storage is, um, an additional storage is um, inserted and plugged in into the device, and this is not automatically reflected in the respective report. So you would have to edit this report and add your um, chart. So what you want to have is a more dynamic behavior. This is where dynamic reporting comes in. And um, the concept of uh, dynamic reporting is that you do not um, specify um, one item, like a group or a device, but you specify a databases. The databases is our top end group chart. So um, it is already in a stable net. And based on this top end group chart, you are uh, able with dynamic reporting to generate um, your report elements accordingly. 
So as you can see here, um, you have uh, four bars in the chart and you have the possibility to um, generate multiple charts out of them and of course the possibility to generate step charts where you have all the, uh, the information in one chart. And the databases approach also gives you um, the possibility to um, exchange the databases uh, more easily. So you do not have to step through um, the report to um, adapt all uh, items, but you just change the databases and everything um, works um, kind of out of the box. And um, now you can see this dynamic reporting approach in action. And I'd like to hand over to my colleague Harald Höhn, which um, is going to guide you through the dynamic reporting in action. So, okay. Um, now we are uh, in a live system and I wanted to show um, how you can configure such um, dynamic reports and how you can use it for uh, multiple elements in the measurement or in the inventory. Um, for First of all, I have defined here um, three um, reports. Um, the device overview, which I have selected at the moment, um, is um, this report which um, Hendrik has introduced uh, on the beginning in the slides and uh, I want to show how you can create this. So you want to get an overview over one device. So therefore um, you need a database um, for this whole template and this data uh, basis is um, a top end chart. This is the first element here in the report and if I um, double click and modify it, um, I can show you what I have configured. So first of all I have configured and I have selected um, one device over which I want to uh, do the report. Uh, um, this uh, selected element um, will be changed later on if you select the um, report um, in the measurement tree, but for the uh, report definition you have only to um, select here one group or one device. Um, in the uh, area below you can select um, the type um, of which uh, measurement you want to use um, in the report for all other templates. Um, in uh, our um, first example, I want to use all um, available monitors and measurement which are available for um, the device core demo. And uh, therefore I use um, monitor SLA chart um, with a limit uh, zero, so it means um, you get all elements um, in one chart and uh, over the last 24 hours, but um, the time zone is and the time range is not really, uh, uh, it's not important here. Um, so if I defined here um, our um, databases, I finish this and this databases have a name. And if I select here the next element, um, we can see I have the possibility now to um, select uh, dynamic chart elements um, and if I do this I have the possibility to um, select all or one of all um, defined group um, top end statistics in this uh, report template. Um, I have only one so it was the monitor availability table um, chart and now I can say okay the first element I want to see in the report um, is the availability of a device and um, I uh, choose the uh, databases and say okay um, give me all uh, ping measurements which are available in the databases and uh, plot it um, in my report template or in my report I want to show later. Um, I have selected the ping, now I can select the uh, um, chart type, so I want to see the RTT chart, um, I want to, I can 
um, use the time interval, so I want to see the last 24 hours. And in the bottom here, I have um, additional possibilities to um, create um, multiple charts or uh, all um, filtered elements uh, to plot in one chart. So at the moment, I want to see um, all as multi-chart, so it means um, if I have in the databases match uh, more than one um, uh, element, uh, for each element I get one chart with a size um, you see below with 1000 pixel and uh, 500 height and uh, I want to um, display it um, once per row. So I can uh, this um, do to two or to three if I want to see more charts in one row. So that's all. So it's a, in, the, in the first um, um, this is the first possibility. If you unselect here the multi-chart, um, um, the all um, filtered elements will be displayed in one chart and you have in the um, right um, section here, you have the possibility to um, say what would you do with this chart elements. So want you to do um, it stacked or want you to do it time synced. So uh, for the availability, I want use, um, I know it's only one ping measurement uh, and I want to see one per row, so that's all. Um, now I come to the CPU section, so I have uh, included some design element and um, I added another dynamic chart element here. I also select the databases and now I want to see all processor measurements which are available in the databases. And uh, this is uh, really good because in the um, static classic reporting you have to select uh, one chart per processor and at the moment uh, with the dynamic reporting um, you can only select you want to see processor uh, measurements and um, if you select a device later um, the device have a quad core system um, you get four charts and uh, if you select a device which have, uh, which have eight cores you get eight charts or, or um, eight lines in one chart. So uh, the first element here, I want to see all um, CPU measurements over the last uh, 24 hours. So the, uh, I select the time range and I want to see all elements in one chart but stacked. So I can see the, um, the uh, usage of the um, device and um, can display it in the report. And the second element I have also added to the CPU um, uh, area. I have uh, added one additional uh, um, uh, dynamic report element also over the processors. But now I want to uh, create one chart um, for each um, matched and filtered um, measurement. So I select here the multiple chart and I say I want to see two charts in one row. Then we come to the interface. It's the same. Um, I have generated one dynamic chart element. I selected as chart type the SNMP interface measurement and I want to see it as a utilization chart also for the um, last 24 hours and I want to see also um, each um, uh, filtered uh, interface measurement um, with uh, in a single chart with two charts in one row. The last section are the storages. I have defined the same um, and dynamic chart element. I selected as chart type storage and I want to see all values which are available for the storage measurement for the last um, 24 hours and also in uh, single charts with two charts per row. So this is the definition. Now I can switch to the measurement tree and I get to one device. Um, I select the device and now I can uh, choose with a right click, have the possibility to um, get a new menu entry um, show dynamic dashboard and in this menu 
you see all uh, report definitions which have um, dynamic report elements in it. So I have here the three elements I have predefined and now I want to see the device overview for the selected device. So I click it and a browser will open and now I get a dynamic da uh, chart and dynamic report defined on or uh, for this selected device. So I get one availability chart, I get the first stacked CPU chart over all CPUs and you get the information in the uh, title of this chart. Um, you, you have um, eight um, CPUs and in the bottom of, of the stack chart you get one chart um, per CPU. Um, so this eight charts, I have eight charts here. Now in the next section the interface state. So I think um, the interface traffic here is very low on this device. So um, you don't see a lot of traffic here. And in the last section, you see this device have two storages, and uh, you get the um, the storage charts in uh, two charts per row um, with the statistic over the last 24 hours. And it's very really simple. If I close here, I select a new device, and I also create this report definition for this device. You have the same report but with different chart elements. So now I have also one um, availability chart but now at the moment this um, device have only four cores so you see only a stack chart with four elements and you get all also only four charts in the um, single chart section below in the uh, CPU area. Now you get only two interfaces because this um, device have only two interfaces and you see this device have five storages so you get all five um, charts um, for all storages only with one um, definition for the dynamic report. So that's really easy. So the only thing what has happened is if I switch back to the report definition and I open the top end the base, uh, the databases again and the only thing is um, I have here selected in the definition of this dynamic report the core demo but uh, if I select uh, in the measurement theme or in the inventory theme another element um, the selection of the base of the databases will change to the selected element which is selected in the tree and now you get a complete different chart but with the same report definition uh, or dynamic report definition um, which you have created before. So that's really easy to define um, re, um, or to define report templates which can um, reuse for uh, different things. So at the moment I have one definition for device overview. So if I want to get an, an, um, an overview over the devices which are not really good uh, or have a bad availability. So I have defined here an additional um, report template. So um, therefore um, I have also included as first um, element in the report the uh, uh, top end chart and you see I have here selected not one device so I have only selected one group so it's at the moment it's a status um, uh, element and uh, the root element of the tree so you get um, if you want here uh, you get the five um, um, devices with the um, uh, largest response time so I want only to get um, ping measurements here in this chart and um, what I forget in the in the forgot in the last um, um, report definition, I have here the possibility to uh, view the um, the filter elements, the databases in the report, or I want to hide it. So if I check here um, the checkbox, I can hide the chart, and if I want to show, uh, if I want to control if I uh, have the correct um, databases um, defined so I can um, select here the visible element and 
uh, we can show it uh, in the report later. Um, so and you can see it. And now the last element here is um, I generate also a dynamic chart element and I have only to use here um, the definition or to, to choose uh, the databases and I want to see uh, all ping measurements over the last um, 24 hours for all selected elements which are defined in the databases. So that's all but now I go back to the measurement and now if I select here in, in the uh, tree I have the um, group router lab. So this is our test lab and we have some uh, Cisco devices in there um, and if I want to choose here um, the availability um, demo report here for this group. It opens and I see the um, in the chart definition or in the database it's now visible. I see the five um, devices with the uh, uh, with the largest response time and for this um, uh, matched measurement I get one chart um, per, per matched or per filtered element um, for the last 24 hours and um, you see the, the charts in, in uh, two charts in, in a single row. So and therefore you have a group re report defined so you, it is easy uh, if you want to see um, the five um, or the baddest availability re um, devices in the group uh, InfoSim Asia here in the demo. I can use it therefore and if I select the availability again. Okay, um, in this is uh, no um, device defined. Uh, sorry, I have to and now I can select it on the root element and do it again and I see the, the worst uh, available devices uh, in the whole system. So uh, we can see we have one device which has uh, 500 milliseconds response time and uh, this is shown on the first uh, element and all other um, bad responsible devices are shown below. Good. Um, now uh, I want to show some uh, special settings. So therefore, if you have a group um, definition of the um, dynamic report element, uh, I can also use um, element filter. So at the moment, I have only ah, okay. Um, I have only here um, devices which uh, have the vendor Cisco. So um, I can remove it, and I can um, do the same for or uh, for Microsoft. Then I see only um, server if I choose this um, report again for uh, some groups in the system. So I think it was a, a short overview over the dynamic report and uh, if you have questions you can ask but uh, I think it's really easy to configure such templates and use it for uh, different um, reasons uh, for device overview and for um, group or for location um, overview or something else so it's really easy. I think I uh, can back to Hendrik and he want to start with a uh, other slides. Okay, thank you very much Harald. Let me just quickly hand over the screen to Hendrik. So, just a second. All right. Well, uh, Hendrik uh, and I have uh, answered some of the questions uh, during Harald's presentation, but before we go into uh, more detail, just um, answering a couple of questions that uh, have been asked by several members uh, of our audience and uh, it's actually a pretty pretty usual question because uh, it was asked if the presentation slides of this webinar will be available and the answer is of course yes. Just send us a quick mail and we'll provide you with the slides. Um, 
other than that, I think Hendrik, you had uh, two questions that you wanted to discuss afterwards. Two questions. Um, I think. Um, or was it just one? I'm sorry. I think it was only one because the other one was answered. Oh yes. Okay. The uh, non-active preview button. Maybe we can go into that one as well. Uh, well, but um, maybe let's just wrap up what um, we just said. Okay. So that we can just um, finish the actual um, presentation and um, go on with the questions. Just to um, sum it all up, um, I want to just summarize what we um, just presented and what what dynamic reporting is about and um, how it benef uh, what are the benefits. Um, you have the possibility to dynamically generate report elements which saves you time and clicks um, and avoids many errors which um, yeah, might result from the uh, manual activities. Um, you also have the uh, possibility to reuse those dynamic reports um, as a template. Um, and you can apply those templates on uh, groups, measurements, monitors, or devices. And um, the dynamic reporting uh, concept also simplifies um, the report cloning. So if you really need um, two different reports, um, then you, do, you can just change uh, the databases and um, you do not uh, necessarily have to um, adapt all the um, other report elements as well. Yes, and um, that's it. And I think we can uh, now discuss open questions. Alrighty. So um, there was one question, Hendrik, that uh, I was forwarding to you during the presentation about that uh, non-active preview button. I don't know if we can discuss that right now. I uh, actually um, the problem with this question is that I could not um, um, I've not seen this inactive uh, preview button in the presentation of Harald and um, after the question um, yeah appeared um, there was no inactive preview button anymore so I don't know if we can reproduce this Maybe we'll just uh, throw the screen back to Harald. Maybe Harald, uh, the question was actually why there is no um, active preview button for the dynamic chart in the uh, menu where you actually create uh, a dynamic chart, uh, if mm -hmm. I got that right. Maybe I'll just throw the screen back to you. So uh, maybe we can go in there one more time. Yeah, uh, for the databases you have the possibility to generate here the preview, but um, this is also a link uh, which is generated in the in the browser, so if I want to generate here um, the preview which I have selected, I see um, all elements which are matched and uh, which are in the databases here, And uh, but for dynamic report elements, um, the problem is I can, this here is uh, um, um, disabled uh, preview button because uh, if I open the um, the preview here, it's not really a one um, URL link uh, what you can display in uh, in the browser. So therefore, we have to integrate some um, yeah logic to uh, generate first the databases and uh, of the, of the chart of the or of the um, result of the databases, we have to generate um, different amount of um, charts. Um, in one HTML file, so at the moment it's not possible, but uh, I think uh, it is a possibility which is, uh, yeah, it's possible and we can do uh, integrate it, but at the moment it's not possible, but I think it okay. can be. So this this might be on on, on our roadmap. Yeah. Okay, yes, yeah. I just got the feedback from uh, uh, the attendee that asked the question, so the question is answered. Thank you very much so far. Um, 
And maybe we can discuss a question that uh, is actually not from this session, but from our session for the Asia-Pacific region this morning, where uh, you were asked to maybe explain again the difference between a dynamic chart and a dynamic top-end chart, because I think those definitions might not be clear to everybody. At least they were not to me. Um, okay. Yeah, the definition was, or the question was, because uh, if I uh, modify uh, one dynamic chart element, here uh, we have two possibilities here. The dynamic chart element is only um, one chart which is matched for um, or one or uh, amount of charts which is matched on the databases. But uh, so dynamic um, top end chart is a possibility to do a databases of a databases. So uh, you can define um, um, different fi filters if you want. So you want to see first of all all uh, measurements which are available in one location, and uh, for this databases you can define another databases. Um, so you um, maybe you want to see only um, um, the device, so the ping device measurements for all um, available um, devices which are uh, select in the uh, databases before. So this is a, a different use, so uh, you can do um, um, additional uh, databases based on uh, other databases. Okay, well, um Thank you very much, uh, Harald, for that uh, explanation. Um, of course, there are uh, a number of other questions that are being typed right in. We're, we're not going to go into detail with uh, all of them right now, um, but uh, please be assured that we will answer every question um, directly after this uh, presentation, after this webinar, and we'll contact you um, via email, most probably. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to type them in the chat window and uh, we'll address those at a later date then. So thank you very much, uh, Henrik and uh, Harald, for your presentation and live demo. Henrik, I think there is a couple of more slides uh, that you want to show. At least I think there's at least the thank you slide. There is at least the you, you enjoy slide. that slide, yes. <laughs> I really I <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> so, I want to share my enjoyment. And, um, <laughs> ah, thank you. Very good. <laughs> and, so, uh, thank you everybody for um, participating and for being with us. And um, if you have um, need uh, for further information or additional resources, you can um, just take a look at this slide. Uh, there are several um, channels uh, on how to obtain information from us. Yeah, so we have a uh, pretty nicely equipped resource section that will provide you with uh, a number of, of uh, collateral and other information. And again, if you have any other question, feel free to contact uh, Hendrik, Harald, myself, or any other member of the staff with InfoSim. So again, uh, thank you everyone for joining. As I've mentioned earlier, a recording of this webinar will be made available to all of you tomorrow via email. And uh, just one more hint, when leaving this webinar, you will be presented with a short questionnaire that helps us to improve and also pick the right topics for upcoming webinars. So please uh, just take a minute or two to answer those questions. It's just a brief three, four, five questions. Uh, we would very much appreciate that. Well, um, we will keep this session open for a few more minutes in case anyone has a final question to put in. Um, but apart from that, I guess that's all from us today. So thanks for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>